We're at the entrance of we're at the entrance to Jerusalem. I'm privileged to be standing on Gesher Meitarim, right near the entrance to Yerushalayim. Maybe Yerushalayim is supposed to be that bridge that bridges the connection of God to the whole world. And maybe this great holiday of Shavuot is the Gesher to bring all of Am Yisrael together right here in the holy city. Chag Sameach. Shalom Ubracha from Yerushalayim. We'd love to share whatever uh, we have with as many people as we can. Anyone who has ever celebrated Shavuot here in Yerushalayim, Yer Kodesh, knows of the unparalleled experience of the sunrise service, Vatikin, Hanetza Hamam. I have literally been moved to tears. It's so emotional to join with our brothers and sisters and taste but a bit of the very sweet taste of Aliyah Regel. One begins to imagine what it would be like to celebrate this great holiday with millions of brothers and sisters who would all join together. Aseret HaDibberot, Aseret HaDivarim, the Ten Commandments, were revealed to our entire nation. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. It's not a disturbance, it's a good that you walk by. The Ten Commandments, were revealed to our entire nation on this great holiday. And as such, one of the names of this holiday is Zman Matan Torateinu, the time of the revelation of our Torah. It always intrigued me that the greatest revelation took place in the desert of all places. You know, walking in Eretz Israel is a mitzvah, you know that? Every four Amot in Eretz Israel is a new section, the world to come. Bayom Hazeh Ba'u Midbar Sinai. On this day they arrived in the Sinai Desert. Bayachanu Bamidbar. Why was the Torah given in the desert? Wouldn't Yerushalayim? Right here in the Yerah Kodesh. Wouldn't that be a more appropriate location for the Aseret HaDibirot? Imagine everyone gathering in Yerushalayim and hearing the word of God here. Even if not Yerushalayim, some other location. I remember hearing Harav Shach Zatzal speaking of the sources. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I remember hearing Harav Shach Zatzal speaking of the sources who taught that the Torah was given outside the land of Israel in order to assure the fact that we don't limit Torah observance to Israel. Torah is the guiding light of our people wherever we may be. The Torah was not given in Israel proper. Harav Tzvi Udakuk Zatzal spoke of the fact that the giving of the Torah was part of the preparatory stages for entering Israel. Therefore, the Torah was not given in Israel. It had to be given outside the land as we needed the blessing of Torah in order to enter the land of Israel. However, why in a desert? Shalom, Bracha. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. However, I hope nobody thinks that we're doing this on Shabbat when I say Shabbat Shalom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't think we should have Shabbat Shalom. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks like this is like a, no. you know, a Saturday afternoon. However, why in a desert of all places? The Midrash in B'midbar Rabbah and elsewhere seems to feel that the desert is the ideal location for the revelation in order to teach a person that the key to Torah has something to do with B'midbar divine desert consciousness. The desert represents a place that is equally open to everyone. The ownerlessness of the Midbar is the guiding principle to Torah connection. Call me she'eno ose atzmo kamidbar hefker eno yachol liknot 
את החוכמה והתורה. Anyone who does not turn their own selves into a level of a desert, open to everyone, cannot properly acquire true wisdom and true Torah. Do we try to build our Jewish homes based on the desert model? One of our great teachers in this area is a renowned biblical personality, Yoav ben Surya. Although most well known for his excellent military skills, Yoav is singled out in Talmudic and Midrashic literature as a paradigm of the divine desert revelation of Torah. In the Book of Kings, we study after the demise of Yoav, Vaikaver Biveto Bamidbar. Yoav was buried in his house in the desert. Did Yoav really live in the desert? Amar of Yehuda Amarav Kam Midbar Ma Midbar. Mufkar lakol, af beto shel yoav, mufkar lakol. And Rashi there explains that the house of Yoav was mufkar laniim. All poor people felt that they had a home in the home of Yoav. One would think that an army general leading the fiercest of battles had little to do with such levels of sensitivity, and yet Adraba, it is specifically Yoav who taught us this great lesson and lived it himself. Not quite as much uphill. Hello. That's great. I had the privilege this week, together with our great friends, of being in the desert. I sensed a very special place of connection to God. And I saw that as we were able to just drive into the desert, so too anyone had free access to that place. Anyone and everyone. Midbar! Ummi midbar matana. Understood homiletically by the rabbis. Im adam mesim atzmo kimidbar zeb. Shakal dashin bo, Torah nitnalo b'matana. We revere our treasured traditions, and we encourage everyone to join the desert understanding of Torah life. An off-quote in teaching is, uh, it's a very famous teaching that's quoted in many, many communities throughout the world on Shavuot. It says that when the Jewish people reached the, the mountain, when they camped at Sinai, Instead of using a plural verb, the Torah uses a singular verb, which is unusual. We're talking about millions of people camping there. And all throughout the Torah, when it says that the Jewish people camp, it says, Vayachanu, they camp. And for an unknown reason to the average reader, when, it come, when they come to Sinai, it says, Vayichan, Sham Yisrael, Neged Har. They all camped as one, a singular verb. I think that the message is that there was such great unity that that was the model for Torah. Allow us, God, please, to correctly identify our sections in your Torah, and may we never err in our quest to get closer to Hashem through the beloved Torah, especially on this holiday of Shavuot. May we all taste the sweetness of Torah on this very Shavuot, all-encompassing of all Shavuot celebrations in world history. Have a sweet, beautiful, and joyous holiday. Chag Sameach! Is the Sinai lost or where is it? No, no, that's why we need Shavuot. We're going to get it back together. Just wait for Shavuot and speak to me the, the night after Shavuot and then tell me we all got together. Some people say that, it's, that you're an eternal optimist. It's me? It's really not true. And uh, uh, if you want to talk about what, what a person should be, I, I, I don't really feel comfortable speaking about myself, but I think that uh, one of the messages of Torah 
is that if a person understands that God is with them, then of course there's room for optimism. And that many references in the Torah, one of the obligations of this holiday of Shavuot is to be happy. And one of the concepts it says in the Torah is the Samachta Lefnei Hashem. If a person understands that they're before God, that this is not just a, a world without direction, that there's a God who guides us and takes care of us, then there's room for optimism. I, I wish I could live up to what you what you think of me, but it, it's just not true. What do you think? It's good or not good? What? I think it is true. Yeah? What was the message? Of Sinai. No, that wasn't the message. And of Sinai. That was not the message. That was the message. Of Sinai. Sinai. That was the message. I thought what was the answer I couldn't hear. Everybody was like, one. No, Dad. Ki ishachad. Ki ishachad, believe it. Bye. They can't hear from me.